Welcome back. This is going to be your reconnaissance if you've got yourself a Marantz PMD 740 and there's something wrong with it. Maybe you need to change some belts. Maybe you need to calibrate it because you think you're recording loud but when you get to playback it's all quiet. Maybe there's something more seriously faulty. You're going to replace some capacitors or diodes or even some integrated circuits. Uh, we're going to take this apart. Show you where all the screws go, where all the wires go, where all the bits are, and hopefully you can sort yourself out. I'm shooting this all at once, but I imagine it's going to be broken in a couple of videos. So the first video, probably what we'll do is uh, get all these knobs off and show you how you go about changing the belts. Then in the second half, or maybe the third part, I'm not exactly sure how many parts are going to be, um, go more depth into removing all the PCBs from the halves of the case, give you the kind of access you'll need for soldering and whatnot. So first things first, let's get the knobs off, both the fader type and uh, these rotary type for your EQ and so on. We'll just come off from the front, the switches, push push and uh, positional switches they are set onto the switches from the back so we won't be able to take them off. this pitch control will come off from the front as well it's a little bit awkward we need to get under there with something plastic that's not gonna damage the case okay all the knobs are off it I've got a foam pillow down so when I turn this over nothing gets scratched some Porter Studios, there's more holes than there are screws, so it becomes a little bit confusing which holes are just mounting post standoffs and which are sockets for the screws. Uh, no such confusion here with the Marantz. All the sockets that you can see contain screws. I've made those a little bit more visually clear by putting red insulation tape beside them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine of them holding the two halves of the case together. I tend to use two sizes of Phillips head screwdriver during the deconstruction of these. I don't believe there was any exception to that where I had to get anything larger or smaller with this unit. Um, so if you see me using a yellow handled one, then that's the larger size and this is the smaller size. I can't remember exactly what it is. This is like the most common size you see for household screws and this is one size down. So um, I believe the Phillips sizing is a number. So if this is two, then this is one or possibly that's three and two. I can't really remember, but um, certainly these ones, that's the larger size, the yellow. Nice to have magnetic screwdriver head to get those out and all the ones that are in there are of this type maybe three and a bit centimeters long wide ferrule because it's plastic mounting post that it's going into sort of anodized black or painted black I'm not sure okay that's all the screws out there now if you turn it back over then tip from this side at the front First thing you're going to see is that there are three cables, one, two, three, running from this board that's got the shuttle controls on it down to this CPU board. They are attached in this bottom end with quite strong wire, so you can just pull those out. Then you're going to be able to tip it back like this, and you can see we've got two cables, brown with one white one grey bunch with one white one coming from this meters board brown one i've already been in here and cut some uh, cable ties and so on that were used to tidy up the inside um, so yours might look slightly different but it goes down to middle of three sockets on the left hand side of this awkwardly shaped cpu board so again thick cables just pull that out and then the grey bunch is going over here to below the leftmost of these two large capacitors on this power conditioning and record arm board. And that's me describing it. I don't think that's actually what this board's labelled as. We'll come to that in due course. Oh, here we are. Q volume PCB. I'm pretty sure that's the rectification and whatnot there. I mean reservoir filter for the DC input. Um, because the DC input... So that's maybe slightly like a shot. I'll move this again. Um, coming from the power switch and the input sockets here, it's going into two sockets here. 
there are different sizes of pins so you're not going to get those confused that will allow you to separate the two halves so now we can focus on how we get this transport out imagining that you wanted to change a belt or something so the transport unit is held to the lower part of the plastic case uh, by five screws they are here 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 and there's another one just down in this corner of the camera angle i don't know if you can see it. it's just the bottom left of the motor here our larger size of phillips head screwdriver is going to do the trick you may want to write some note to yourself for this corner because you can see that there's a little earth connection wire and making sure that the chassis is connected to common ground that goes up to this q volume pcb up here so I leave little notes like that to myself um, inside these units to remind myself about potential reconstruction pitfalls like that. All five of those screws are like this, maybe centimetre and a bit long, brassish in colour. At that point you're going to be able to lift this out and get a clearer sense of how it's connected electrically. Um, so you can see that there's a cable running from the board on the back of the transport and terminating in the only horizontally orientated socket on the CPU board near the top. I can't remember exactly what the cable tie situation was when I first received this. This was partly disassembled when I first received it, um, but I've added that cable tie, so exactly where this cable is going round or tied on to the transport may differ on your unit. Um, but that's a strong cable, so you can just lift that out. now. The other thing is that all the cables coming from the magnetic heads themselves are going underneath this mixture PCB and connecting on the sockets on the record playback amp. So it's kind of up to you whether you partly unscrew this mixer in order to unplug those. You probably have got enough leeway here to be able to change the belts without unplugging those. Um, I would suggest if you can be bothered to go to the extra effort of getting these unplugged then it's a little better because you're going to put less strain on the delicate cylinder connection in the base of these heads so i will pull the camera out in a second and show you how to get access to those sockets just in case again you can see that i've already been in here and done some marking up with the black permanent marker although they're meant to be permanent actually you can use isopropyl wipes to get rid of this if you felt it looked ugly but you notice i've put crosses through some of the holes um, because these are passed through holes so the screws between the two halves of the case can close the unit but then we've got these other one two three four and that's meant to be an arrow in there to screw number five in the center those are holding this board against mounting posts but separate from the record amplifier circuit board below that. You would have to remove these in order to get to some of the trim pots to do calibration under here anyway. You would have to remove this if you needed to solder anything on any of these boards under here. I'm doing it at this stage just so that if you're not comfortable in this restricted space changing these belts and you want to get this transport completely separate of the rest of the unit, we can unplug these heads. So I'll just take out these five screws just now and uh, again all the screws are pretty much identical to the ones that came out of the transport earlier. With those screws removed you don't need to unplug any cables but this board will now tip. Underneath here you're going to see that there is first of all this shielding it's connected via this common ground cable to the bottom leftmost screw on the CPU PCB so you can just let that dangle and then there's this um, equivalently shaped piece of clear plastic that goes below that so I'll just put that off to one side and I think the easiest way to show you where the cables for the heads terminate is to go handheld so it's these two sockets here now you'll notice that um, this plug is going into a white socket um, when I'm pulling that I'm pulling on the plastic not on the wire some of these wires are very thin so be careful with those if you're feeling cautious you could pry at those with a flathead screwdriver or something um, but the overall length of these cables does give you a good indication of which plugs into where and then back over here then this is your arrays head so it's going into a socket beside these four uh, roll inductors just in this bottom right corner and now your transport is completely 
free of the rest of the system. So let's concentrate on this next.